This week in the shop, we are starting things off with the bug, then we're going out for a field shoot, and then we gotta be back in the shop to prep two vehicles for a little bit more filming that we have to do at the end of the week. So, let's get things started. First, coffee. <laughs> What I'm working on right now on the bug is I want to prep all the front. So the first uh, relaunch episode of this vehicle is basically going to be the front suspension and finishing it up. A lot of it was just mocked up to make the vehicle movable so my buddy KT could knock out the killer uh, patina paint job. I keep kicking things here on the floor. There's like all kinds of parts here on the floor, stuff that I got to take care of. Anyway, so uh, what I need to do is uh, today I need to work on a mount for that steering rack. So that's gotta go in there. The bug normally does not have a steering rack. It had a, a steering gear that actually mounted right here, right here, uh, behind this little window is actually where it mounted. Normally it would mount right in here. But because I raised that beam up, uh, I couldn't use that. And I actually wanted the rack. Uh, I think it's just a little bit better setup. And I am gonna go with an electric power steering kit on this. So what I'm gonna start by doing is I'm actually gonna tear down both sides of the front brakes. These are just basically, this is a disc brake conversion kit. Uh, so I'm gonna pull those apart, clean them up. You can see there's a bunch of surface rust on them. I'm gonna clean those up, get them. I don't think I uh, greased any of the wheel bearings in there. So I'm gonna get that all taken care of on both sides, get that set. Then I'm gonna set it at ride height so I can figure out the uh, location for the height sensors for the AccuAir kit as well as for the um, steering rack because I want that steering rack to be perfectly in line when the vehicle's at ride height. The cool thing about the bugs is the bugs have basically like a like a trailing arm almost uh, front suspension. So the beam is the suspension. So it has two tubes that go across. Normally there's torsion bars in here and as this travels up and down it actually twists the torsion bar. So instead of like a like a traditional A-arm car where you think where the where the suspension travels up and down like this, on a bug what happens is the suspension is actually traveling up and down like this. So it's like a, it's almost like a trailing arm on the back of a car. Um, it's it's just rather it's a rather unique system. It makes setting up the steering actually pretty simple because it makes setting up the steering pretty simple because I don't have to worry about bump steer even though I'm using that rack, normally when you put a steering rack in, you have to make sure the pivot points are the exact same spot that the um, A-arms pivot at, but I don't need to worry about that because I don't have A-arms, these little, little trailing arms on here. So anyway, so that's the plan. Prep it, get all the kind of junk done, and get all the work done on here so when the crew comes in, they can basically, ba -da, front suspension. And like I said before, we're doing the EPS kit. I am keeping the factory column, just keep because I've got it, and also the super cool, it's got this super cool Momo steering wheel. I've had this steering wheel, literally, I think I bought this when I was 14 years old. So it's just kind of cool to still have that in the car. And uh, so that's gonna stay there. I'm just gonna keep that look of like classic bug. You know, I'm not gonna do like a tilt column right. I'm just gonna put that in there. And uh, the good news is, is over the weekend, this little ADD brain travel out here, one of the reasons that this vehicle stalled was because I really didn't know what I was going to do with the interior because I kind of went back and forth about having like a full custom interior. I even bought some like cheap seats like leather, not real leather, faux leather, Corinthian leather, cheap little eBay seats for it. And that was my plan. But now I've made the decision. And now I know what I'm going to do with the interior. I know exactly what my plan is. Super excited about it. And it's really, it's going to be a lot easier to do. It's going to allow me to do a bunch of bead rolling, which I think is also super cool. And it's really going to tie the whole thing together. And so I ordered some new seats over the weekend. They'll get here this week and I'll be able to show those to you as well. So first, I'm going to tear down that front and start down. So what I've basically done here is set the vehicle at ride height with the tire in place. Um, 
this is important because it's not really that big of a deal whether or not these uh, tie rods move up and down, but I do want this thing positioned in such a way that it helps clear the gas tank. So I want to get it as low as I can and then also want to make sure that nothing else is in the way. And so what I've done now is I've kind of got a good, good spot for it. That's basically where it's going to land. I'm just going to make a little tab that's going to basically weld onto this section of the tunnel. This is called the, the tunnel in a, in a type one bug. It basically just basically the eye, it's the center of the car. It's basically the frame. This is the whole frame goes on the center of the car and the floor pans on are, are on either side, but this is essentially the frame. It just goes right down the middle. Um, so I'm gonna make a mount for the steering rack that'll go on there. Um, you can see I'm gonna have to make this hole a little bit bigger because I do want this heim joint to pop through the firewall right here. This is where the original steering column came down. I don't need to worry about that. That's just going away. Uh, this is going to go up through here. So I want to go ahead and make the tabs for uh, tabs for that. Get that done. I also need the clearance. You can see right here. Hold on. Let me tilt you up a little bit. You can see I need to clearance this section, the firewall, or this section of the inner fender right there. And that is because the tire is hitting when it turns. And so I'm going to go ahead and clearance that on both sides for the tire. And then, um, oh, and then I'll mount the uh, height sensors right in here. Height sensor is going to mount off there. The reason you need to set it at ride height is because the height sensor, need, height sensor needs to basically be zero at ride height. And then when it goes up, it goes like this. And then it goes down, it goes like that. And that way it basically can, you can set your heights however you want. The nice thing is, is it has like basically a, the AccuAware setup has a program where you can go ahead and program it yourself or you can go ahead and change it. It's, it's your choice. So I'm basically going to probably set it with manual heights and go from there. But now that I have that done, I'm going to go to the plasma table, cut out a little plate that the rack will mount to. I'll weld that in, drill some holes in it, put some nuts, nuts and bolts in. We'll bolt the rack down. That'll get that done. And then I'll go ahead and clearance those sections. And then we'll move on to the polish. Okay, so the front of the bug is pretty much ready for TV at this point. This is just kind of some of the piddly stuff that I have to spend time figuring out. So I got the mounts made for the AccuWare sensors and basically cycled the suspension, make sure that was all good. This is all put back together. I do have to add a spacer down here on this uh, Heim joint because it's maxing out the actual movement of that uh, of that joint when the bags air out. but. Aside from that, oh, I had to massage the inner fender lip here so it would actually turn when it's at uh, when it's at ride height. Um, so that's all done. So that's ready for when the crew shows up later in the week. Uh, this is what I do a lot of the times in here. Basically, you know, I've got my crew. Uh, he's going to come in. Uh, they're going to come in on Friday, and we're basically going to film a bunch of stuff in the Bug, a bunch of stuff in the Comanche, and then some stuff on the Cummins Pirate TJ. So what I'm going to do right now today is I'm going to go ahead and start working on prepping some stuff for the Comanche, because the Comanche's got some cool junk going on in it. So I've got the sheet metal done in the bed. I've got the sheet metal done inside the cab. Uh, so now I'm going to move into under the hood, because I'm actually going to do some internal uh, sheet metal in here as well. So what I want to do is I want to figure out um, before the crew shows up, I want to figure out placement of this radiator because yes this is where the radiator is going to go and i got something kind of cool planned for that so i want to do radiator mounts i want to figure out a winch mount and then i want to figure out there's another piece that's actually going to go right up in here and i want to see where it's going to go based in uh, relation to the rest of the truck so i think i'll go ahead and get it bolted on and then i can show you what i got to fight and move around with and we'll go from there
step one of this is actually I made the decision I'm going to basically build a couple of triangular brackets that are going to come up on the side here and that is what's going to mount the radiator at the angle that I want. I'm going to go ahead and utilize the T-slots in this radiator. It's got these little T-slots right here so I'm going to go ahead and utilize those with these little bolts right here. So I'm just going to cut myself some super cool little brackets and the brackets are actually just going to weld in. I'm going to clean this frame rail up and I'm going to weld those into place. Then the radiator will bolt onto those. And then off of these T-slot brackets or T-slots, I'll also have the mounts for the intercooler that's going to go there. So I'm going to go ahead and get the radiator mounted first and then I'll start working on where the winch is going to go. All this stuff, I just need to pre-make it. So uh, when we go to film on this front end, I can have that stuff all pre-done. It just makes life a lot simpler when we're filming because... There's a lot of just head scratching on this right now because I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to fit everything, where it's going to go, and all that kind of jazz. But so far, I'm really happy with how it's looking. So I think we're going to be okay. So first step, plus. Right now, I want to work on the bumpers for the back of the defender that's where i'm going to start and i said before i'm going to make these little uh these little curve pieces i'm going to make a couple things out of cardboard see what they look like and then i'll go from there and maybe cut something on the bottom Cutting all my steel, I just got this saw uh, from Woodward Fab. I, would do, I do a lot of stuff with Woodward Fab over on Four Wheeler, and he's always asking me like, "Hey, what do you want to? What tool do you want to add to the shop for this year?" And I was like looking at a bunch of these horizontal band saws, and I didn't even realize they had one. And so as soon as I saw they had one, I was stoked because these are super nice. Number one, they do such a nice clean cut. Uh, it's so nice to do miters with these things because you end up with that perfect angle no matter what when you do those angles on the chop saw they're never perfect and then what actually happens is while you're cutting it the blade actually bends and so you never end up with the perfect spot but with these horizontal band saws you can always end up with that perfect cut and this is actually this isn't a cheap saw this is right around two grand but this is a lot of saw for the money so it's really big you know it's got a huge uh i mean this is a piece of four inch i think it can cut up to seven inch inside the throat on this thing which is awesome has the uh lubricator for the blades so you get extra long life out of the blades it's got the uh auto feed mechanism over here so basically you put it up and then you just basically adjust this knob that determines how fast it goes down that means you just basically have to turn it on let it cut and away you go uh it's big it's beefy it's super strong so that gives it a lot of weight which i really like so i'm super stoked with this i actually got this because i'm going to be building a chassis for the jeepster on four-wheeler i'm actually going to pre-build it so you're going to see me actually build it uh with this saw uh, on this channel because so i'm going to pre-build a bunch of it uh so when the production crew shows up we can fly through that because i really want to like bang that thing out in that first episode because i love when i do stuff well the first episodes i put a lot of effort into on four-wheeler because i try to make sure that it's like a good way to kick off the season and so this year what i want to do is i'm basically going to bring the jeepster body in all it is is a body i've already got the engine got the transmission we know what transfer case is going to go in i've got an adapter coming for that so i think the plan for there is basically just going to be bing bang boom you know get this thing done uh and basically have a full rolling chassis at the end of it. it's actually going to be two episodes episode one episode two so we're going to do chassis in one uh, i got to make some changes to the axles that i got for it got some cool axles for it uh, tires and wheels then we'll probably do drivetrain after that but anyway 
So that's the plan. So you'll see that saw a lot. I just really, I'm so happy that it showed up. I love those things. I've always wanted a good horizontal bandsaw. So let me show you what we're doing over here with these bumpers. Um, so what I want to do on these is these little end caps. A lot of the defenders have like a plastic little end cap that goes on them. And so what I want to do is I want to basically put these little sort of caps on there to look like a plastic end cap, but it's actually going to be metal. And so that'll, that'll kind of sit just a little bit proud of, of this. I'm actually going to put a face on this and wrap it. It's going to wrap all the way around like that. And that'll give it a good, strong sort of beefy side to it. Um, and then it'll just be this face will be the rest of the rear bumper. Uh, I do have some lights for it. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out the lights right now, figure out the holes for those, get those in there. Then I'll add these plates. Um, add the face to these plates and then I'll probably mock it up into place on the back of the Defender. So got these little flush mount, well sort of flush mount, they got to go in the bumper, little reverse light kind of things and instead of spending time trying to lay this out on this bumper and figuring out how to make it work, what I'm actually going to do is I actually just went ahead and drew up uh, basically the two holes on uh, in Bentec what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to use the plasma table to simply cut out the two holes and just put the piece of steel up on here. And then all it's going to do is basically cut my two holes and then I'll stop the program mid run and pull it out and we'll put them in. It's going to be pretty cool. I've done this a couple times. I like to do this on this rectangular structural stuff. It's just another way to use a plasma table, you know, it's kind of fun. The only thing you have to watch out for is you need to make sure that this sheet, this piece is, is perfectly even. Because if it's cocked slightly, then the holes get kind of jacked up. But what I did is I just ran the ran the torch head back and forth a couple times, and now I've got it set down here on the x-axis. So now we should be good to go. stop the program because in order to make sure I had these in the right spot I actually had to draw this rectangle so it was actually running up here to cut the rectangle so that's the nice thing what happened the remote control you just hit the red button to stop it and then we're good to go I'll just hold it and pull that tube out now I got these basically these recesses all done so these little flush mount lights will sit right in there like that that'll be my little reverse lights on the back of this truck worked out perfect The bumper does look kind of boring, but I talked to the guy who owns this truck and he doesn't want anything crazy and flashy on the back. We talked about putting a step in there, but the problem is uh, the hitch, which is on the back of this thing, it is right, gonna sit basically right underneath the bumper. You can see that hitch is gonna sit right there, so I don't want to uh, I don't want to interfere with that. It's basically, the bumper's just gonna sit basically right on top of that, just a little bit higher. And then uh, I'm probably gonna end up possibly now i don't know i might flip those bolts around on that hitch and then bolt the hitch in the back side and then weld the bumper to the hitch and then that hitch will become part of the bumper mount and then the rest of the bumper mount is just going to slide into the frame just a piece of flat plate it's going to slide in there at least that's the plan we'll see how it turns out i'm going to get the caps put on it answer that phone call and keep going from there so before i put these on here what i'm going to do is i'm basically going to figure out how much of a face plate that I need. Basically what I want to do is take a piece of steel and just wrap it all the way around here and stop right there. And uh, and then that face plate will basically weld to the front of this bumper. It'll look like the stock plastic caps that are normally on these uh, Defender bumpers, but uh, obviously they'll be made out of steel. Uh, one thing that I've decided I'm going to change is on the back of the Defender, there is this trailer hitch thing right here that's a stock jk trailer hitch um i don't like it so that's gonna go away and i picked up this bad boy right here Duk -duk -duk -duk, little receiver grab this from harbor freight so it's just a receiver that you can get at harbor freight 
And what I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to make it part of the bumper. I am going to put it in in the middle right in here somewhere. I just think it'll really kind of finish out the look of the bumper. What I'll probably end up doing is instead of, um, I think I'll probably cut a slot, slide it up in and weld it and I'll have it hang down just a little bit, stick out a little bit. I think it'll look pretty cool and it'll just break up this big flat part. Then I can get rid of that big clunky JK hitch. So right now I'm gonna do some more cutting on the plasma table and then just a whole bunch of welding. So I changed things up in the shop recently. Um, I've always liked flat wheels. I think they work great. But I was actually listening to a podcast with uh, Josh Mazarone on it. And he was talking about, instead of using a flat wheel all the time, sometimes using just basically a sanding disc and a backer on the back of your four and a half inch grinder if you want to make something perfectly flat because the flat wheel will always contour to every bit of the metal while the, this this will basically stay flat because it's got that plastic backer. So that's what I did with these ones. Basically, I hit the edges here to make sure they were good and flat and then finished it with the flat wheel just rounding off that edge. You can see how they're going to sit on the bumper when they're all said and done. You can see that kind of looks like a factory uh, bumper cap that you would see on a plastic bumper on a Defender. Um, it's not a big deal to uh, grind that down because I did fully weld it on the inside, so it's good and strong. It's also, this isn't a rock colored bumper. This is just like a sort of a dressy up bumper. And then the way this is going to work is this bumper, as you can see, this cap will basically wrap that corner right there. This will be textured black. That's what color this bumper will be. But I'm just trying to decide. I think I'm going to have it basically a half inch out on either side. The body on this thing doesn't move at all and honestly my original plan was to make it bolt onto the frame but i think now that i have it all built i think i'm just going to weld it onto the frame i think that's just gonna be better to weld it on the frame um just because of the way that frame is set up but i am gonna first add that trailer hitch into the back Another tool that I like to buy are these machinist squares. It's always good to have a square in the shop. Um, but I buy these, I just get them on Amazon. I get like a pack of them for like 30 or, I can't remember how much I pay, like 20 bucks for a bunch of them. Um, you know, they're all metal. They're designed to be like super accurate, but I don't know how accurate they're coming from Amazon. But the nice thing is, is they're basically disposable essentially, because I can just toss them up here, you know, Mark, mark a line, mark a line, flip it over. I drilled these holes in here because basically that's gonna give me that radius on that corner. And so when I slide the receiver down in, once I cut that out, so I'm gonna cut that out, shorten this receiver up. I'll probably shorten the receiver up to somewhere right about there. Um, and then I'll add two inches to that so it sticks all the way back and flush. And now I'll just weld it in and we'll have a new receiver bumper.
realized by moving this receiver up into here, now I don't have anywhere for any safety chains to hook up. Um, and I think we're going to want that. So I think what I'll do is I'll, uh, I think I'll just cut a little plate piece uh, of plate out on the plasma table. And I was thinking of putting it on fair flat and then just have some holes in it. But I think that would be a little bit too close to the, the pin. Pin here is pretty close. So I think what I'm going to do instead is I might just angle it down just a little bit and then just have a couple holes in it. That's what I'll do. I'll just make like a little plate piece that goes like boop, boop, boop with a hole in a hole. That's what I see when I have a plasma table. I can make anything. So last thing I got to do is basically mount these little sort of flush mount LEDs in the bumper. I don't, we didn't have to put these in, but I just think it's way better to have a good backup light on a truck. Uh, I've got these on uh, something similar to this on my Willys wagon. I like it a lot. Uh, what I'm going to do since I can't really get to these nuts on the backside, it did come with a bunch of nuts right here, bolts and nuts is what I'm actually going to do is drill and tap. The actual bumper itself should be fine. I mean, it just has to hold these little uh, plastic things in. And then I can take it over and get it set on the truck and then figure out the mounts to the frame. All right, so right there, I am really liking how this rear bumper turned out. It's nothing fancy, it's just kind of super simple, but it looks kind of like what you'd see factory on one of these Defenders, just like a squared off bumper. Um, but instead of plastic end caps, obviously I got these uh, metal eighth inch ones. This entire piece is gonna be textured black, finished out, that's how it's gonna get finished. And I am happy that I ended up moving the the trailer hitch the receiver up into here i just did these little chain hooks this thing's not going to haul any serious trailers it may haul like one of those little teardrop trailers like i did on the final episode when we took it out but it's not going to be hauling like a car trailer i think it's only got a little four cylinder two eight so those will work just for a set of small chains that'll be perfect but yeah i really really like that so one thing i didn't run this um bolt all the way in it felt like the thread started to gall up so i just stopped and then this one the same i think actually what's happening is i think it's actually binding against the plastic on this little housing right here so what i'm gonna do is i gotta pull them off anyway to coat the bumper um but i'm just putting them in there put the bolts there so i didn't lose them but you can see these cool little flush mount leds look real nice tucks in really nice and tight uh around the body kind of finishes off that rear corner gives it a really good look Okay, so that's the rear bumper. That's where I'm gonna stop. Uh, probably for this video, I think I'll knock out the front bumper. It's gonna look the exact same. So I don't think I'll probably show it to you when it's done. And then I'll show you what I'm doing with the rock sliders when they're done as well. But that's one more thing done on the Defender. She's getting close, really just this. Gotta knock out the seat mounts and then uh, build a center console. And then it, the interior guy's gotta do the roof and he's gotta do some more seats 
uh, in the back. He want the owner of this wants some jump seats in the back. But now that those bumpers are done, like in that. All right. So thanks again for checking in here in the Big Tire Garage. We'll see you guys next time. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do right now. Probably have coffee. Probably have coffee. All right. Later, guys.